You know, on a day this beautiful, it's, uh, I almost feel like we have not a care in the world. But as it turns out, uh, we got uh, a whole lot of cares. And among the cares that we have are uh, uh, when we uh, pull up to a gas pump and fill up our vehicles with, uh, with, uh, with fuel, uh, we send a lot of money to places around the world, to, uh, to countries that are unstable, undemocratic, and I'm afraid that uh, in too many instances they actually use our money to, uh, to try to hurt us. And we ought to be smarter than, uh, than doing that. There's a, the national security aspect of what Senator Merkley's uh, trying to do here that sometimes we lose sight of but it's a very important part of it. And I just applaud his efforts to, to help make sure that uh, as we move toward 2016, when the requirement of uh, uh, fuel efficiency, fleet average reaches 35 miles per gallon, that we won't just stop there, uh, that we'll keep on uh, going. We're trying to set a good example in, uh, in Delaware. Delaware, for, uh, for many years, was the only uh, state in which there was auto assembly operations. And uh, we lost uh, literally in uh, 2009, within a six month period, our Chrysler plant, uh, Durango's, hybrid Durango's. We lost our GM plant where we built uh, Pontiac solstices and Saturn skies. They went away. And the idea was, uh, at least at the time, that neither plant would ever be opened again. Well, guess what? Uh, we're going to open uh, the uh, GM plant. Uh, it's already open. The work's going on. And then late next year, we'll have about 2,500 people there building a Fisker product. Uh, a Fisker product, Henry Fisker is one of the premier uh, auto designers really in the world. And He's starting a small uh, car company, and they're going to be building vehicles that will get about 80 miles per gallon, 80 miles per gallon, drop-dead beautiful cars with that kind of mileage. And what we want to do is to incentivize more of that. that is, that's what's possible. You know, with the Chevrolet Volt and we have uh, Nissan Leaf and all, we want to make sure that uh, when people call our offices, as they have, whether it's uh, Jeff or, or, or Michael Bennett, they call our office and say, well, I'm concerned about the price of, of oil. We want to be able to say, well, there's like, here's a list of 40 vehicles that you can buy in this country that actually get 30 or 40 miles or 50 miles per gallon. And uh, think about this the next time you're making a purchase. So what, that's one, number one, get ourselves off of foreign oil. At the same time, while we do that, find ways to develop products, cars, vehicles in this country that we can build with new technology and sell not just in this country, around the world. The Fisker products that we're going to be manufacturing late next year at our old GM plant in Wilmington, Delaware, uh, will go about uh, half of them will be sold in this country, half of them will be sold around the world got a uh, fixed uh, a Wilmington, Port of Wilmington auto terminal, we're ready to roll. So that's number one. Uh, that's what I call turning, uh, taking uh, adversity and turning it into opportunity. Uh, number two, I, I come to work uh, almost every day on the train. And uh, I drive my car. We live uh, just about 10 minutes from the train station in Wilmington. And I get on the train. And uh, right across the, uh, the, right by the train station is a, we have a line of cabs. So people can come to take the train by a cab. Uh, and then right across the street from the train station is a bus station. And so you have the opportunity to drive your own car. You have the opportunity to take a, a cab to the train station. You have the opportunity to get a bus, maybe an interstate bus or a local bus. And uh, you have the, uh, the opportunity to walk. I mean, there's like, it's multimodal. It's a multimodal. We come down on the train to, uh, uh, to uh, BWI, just south of Baltimore. People can get off the train, take a shuttle, go catch a plane. And that's the, uh, that's, those are the kinds of connections that, uh, that are smart and, and make sense. And the idea is to kind of like make them all work together in an intermodal way and then meet the, the individual needs that we have as people. Uh, part of what uh, Senator Merkley is trying to do here is to, to, to not only ensure, ensure that people have smart choices for more energy efficient vehicles to reduce our dependence on foreign oil, but also to make sure that we have options to get out of our cars, trucks, and vans and, uh, and maybe take a cab, maybe walk, maybe take a bus. Maybe take a, a transit train in our, in our neighborhood, we take SEPTA. But uh, make sure that we have those options available and that, uh, that we use that. And I was pleased to, to offer legislation in the last Congress called Clean Tea uh, that helps to, uh, to actually make a fair amount of money available for, for that purpose. And I'm delighted that uh, Senator Merkley's included that in, uh, in, this, uh, in this bill. The last thing I'll say, uh, we centers in, tend to see a lot of things through the eyes of our own state. And, that. And in, in our state, we have a little company called DuPont. They've been around for a long time, and they've just uh, they've gotten very much into uh, the business of biofuels. They think it's, it should be possible for us to fuel ourselves and to feed ourselves. And it wasn't that long ago that you'd raise a, uh, an acre of corn, you maybe get 75 bushels of corn off an acre. Before long, we'll be up to 200, 250 bushels of corn per acre. And I've never been a big advocate of corn ethanol as an, ad, as a, as an option to, to fuel our vehicles. But the idea of using the, the stock of the corn the ears of the corn, the leaves of the corn, create cellulosic uh, ethanol, cellulosic ethanol that actually has better energy density, travels better in pipelines, 
mixes better with gasoline. There's all kinds of biofuel uh, work that's going on. We need to do more of that, and some of it is really exciting. Better energy density, fewer environmental consequences, and again, the legislation that he's proposed uh, moves us in that direction. So think about it. More energy efficient vehicles, that's great. Number two, help people uh, get out of their cars, trucks, and vans and take other modes of, of, of transportation that make sense and are kind of linked together in a smart way. And number three, for those of us who are still going to be needing fuel to fuel our vehicles and we can't harvest the wind maybe just yet off of uh, Rehoboth uh, Beach, Delaware, we'll be able to, uh, to grow uh, our way out of this with, uh, with uh, fuels that are a lot smarter than corn, corn ethanol. That's the, the way we want to go and the direction we need to go. This man is leading us, and I'm proud to be in this parade with him. Thank you.